In English it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now the, the Bible says if we raise or if we train a child in the way he should go, when he's older he will not depart. But, but we see often in Christian families that that doesn't work. That's not true. And so the question is, well, then that means, is God's word not true? Or is our understanding of God's not word not right? So of course his word is true. So the issue is not uh, that, uh, so, so the promise is true. If we train the child in the way he should go, he will not depart. So the problem has to be with the way that we're raising our children. Now, I for many years made a, a big mistake. I compared myself with others. And so I would think, okay, I'm raising my children in more focused on raising them in God's way than other But the problem with that is that in our generation, the way people raise children in the church is far from the standard. So if you raise them above the standard that's around us, you'll still be way below the standard. So I had to go back hundreds of years to find out how Christians have raised their children. And, and whenever we do it in the way that, that, that our forefathers did it, then we will see the results. So here in, in, in Ephesians chapter 6, I, I want to notice a couple points. First, we notice that it's talking to fathers, not mothers. Raising children is primarily the responsibility of fathers. Raising children to Patient. Not mothers. That is the very first thing that our society completely gets wrong. Because we, because the, the mothers are with the children more, so we think it's their job to focus on raising the children. But the Bible clearly says that the, the wife is the husband's helper. So the task of raising children belongs to the father. And the mother only helps the father with that task. Now we understand that in our society a lot of fathers are not saved, they're not serving God or... They're not even around. So in that case, the mother will have to take the responsibility that should belong to the man. It'll make it more difficult because the woman was not made to bear all. 
But God gives grace. But especially those that if there there are so we've got a couple men here. So, and I don't know what uh, one even race that two race okay, but uh, and maybe uh, watching the video. So if you are a man, this is your responsibility. You're the one that should be here. If it if you know maybe you're here today and your husband is like, oh well, I don't need to go because it's about raising children. Well, that husband missed it. Because since it's about raising children, it's primarily for men. Now, and we go down and it says, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Verse 4, second half. Now, these are the two aspects that we're going to cover today. The discipline of the Lord and the instruction of the Lord. There's three words there. Bring up in the training and admonition. Bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord in the original. Okay, so the So the, the two issues are one, disciplining them in their life and their character. Their habits, their their way of life. The second thing is instructing them in the commands and the gospel of God. So there's disciplining their character. But there's also teaching them the truth of God. So to raise the children, we need to do both of those. If you teach your children the, the, the gospel and you teach it, children the ways of God but, but you don't discipline them in their character it'll be like pouring you know uh, pouring water on the ground it'll just dissipate it'll just go away you need to form their life also not just inform them and, and if you discipline them to where they have good habits, where they, they have a good character, but you don't lead them to the gospel, they will be self righteous until the day they die and go to hell. Because they will not be saved. Because they can't be saved through uh, discipline and a structured life. So those are the two things, those are the two aspects we're going to look at. First, disciplining, and then also instructing our children. So the first statement I want to start off with that you must know. Is about your children. Your children are little demons. They are not little angels. They are little demons that are at enmity with God. They are self centered and, proud and wicked and they are at war with God. You say, well, no, but my my kids are like they're always so honest and like they. And I bet you that he's very proud about being very. But I can tell you, I can guarantee you, he is very proud about being very. Because his heart is wicked and deceitful. 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 Because his heart is wicked and
Uh, so we have to understand not the nature of humanity, but the nature of our children. So we have to understand not the nature of humanity, but the nature of our children. If we don't, then we will make a mistake about how we deal with our children, how we train our children. If we don't, then we will make a mistake about how we deal with our children. Israel. Whenever uh, we've been in, in our family, we've been the last couple of weeks been reading uh, Exodus. 我们最近这两呃星期我们在读关于出埃及记。Sorry， 太热了。But we've been reading Exodus. 我们在最最近正在读这个出埃及记。So we've been noticing that the Israelites, when Moses came, so we 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 found, uh, when Israelites came and and went to Pharaoh, they then just, uh, oh, when when Moses came, he went to Pharaoh. That 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 then it caused trouble for the Israelites, and they were mad and angry with Moses. So it caused trouble for the Israelites, and they were mad and angry with Moses. So it caused trouble for the Israelites, and they were mad and angry with Moses. So it caused trouble for the Israelites, and they were mad and angry with Moses. Then God brought all the judgments on Pharaoh. 后来神审判了法老王 And brought the Israelites out of Egypt with a mighty hand. 然后用他大能的手救了以色列人脱了以色呃这个埃及 Then when they got to the Red Sea, 后来他们走到红海的时候 They got mad again. Why didn't we just die in Egypt? 他们又上过星期，为什么没有死在埃及？ Then God opened the Red Sea. And they went through the Red Sea. 后来神把这个红海分为两半，他们经过了红海。And then they begin to sing and shout, "Wow! Look, look what God said! He destroyed all the Egyptians." 接下来他们开始欢喜快乐跳舞。你看，神真伟大，他毁灭了一埃及人。And then after the song ends, the next verse. Says they begin to complain that the water was bitter; they didn't have any water to drink. 一唱完歌呢，下一个段落就是说，他们因为没有水喝，就开始埋怨神。Then God purified the water. 结果神洁净了那个水。Then they were upset; they didn't have anything to eat that was good. 后来他们啊，埋怨没有好吃的东西啊。They were only pleased with God when He gave them what they wanted. And they continued to forget that God would take care of them. Why on earth? Why on earth would they be afraid at the Red Sea? They just saw God destroy Egypt. Because they didn't trust that God was going to continue to help them. Once they got through that, then they didn't have the water that they wanted, and they were, oh no, God's going to let us die without、uh, die of thirst. So this challenge is over. After that, they again start to complain. We have no water. We are going to die. He gave. Gave them. He started giving them manna. He started giving them manna. And then whenever they they got the manna, he said, "Okay, but don't keep anybody and don't keep any of the manna until the next day." Then he told them, "You must not leave the manna until the next day." But they didn't know for sure if the manna was going to be there the next day. But they didn't know for sure if the manna was going to be there the next day. So they kept it. 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 I said, why didn't they trust him? Then God said, on the sixth day, gather two, twice as much, because on the seventh day there'll be no manna. Well, I did not tell them that you today you need to show two times as much of the manna because on the sixth day there'll be no manna. But some of them, but some of them, only collected enough for one day. They just showed a day. Why? Because they didn't believe that it wouldn't grow worms the next day. They were afraid God couldn't keep it until the next day. Because they didn't believe that it wouldn't grow worms the next day. They were afraid God couldn't keep it until the next day. Because they didn't believe that it wouldn't grow worms the next day. They were afraid God couldn't keep it until the next day. Because they didn't Write that history. Why should we show you this history? To show us what human beings are. He wants to teach us what human beings are. They're angry with God if God doesn't do just what they want. Is 生生的去去非生做他们真想要的。And they always forget to trust God. They always forget what He's done, and their their anxiety and their fear always overwhelms them. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's done, and their anxiety and their fear always comes back up. They always forget what He's Moses was even down with the two tablets of stone. 就是摩西还没有从西奈山下来拿着那个两块石板。They were already sinning against God. They already made broke the first commandment and made an idol and worshipped it. They already made broke the first commandment and made an idol and worshipped it. They already made broke the first commandment and made an idol and worshipped it. They already made broke the first commandment and made an idol and worshipped it. They already made broke the first commandment
So by the time Moses got down the mountain, he broke it and had to go straight back up. Because humans' hearts are harder than stone ever is. So giving them a law, giving them truth will never change that. That's why a person must be born again. They must be made into a new creation. So, this is your children. You can teach them what you want. You can discipline how that you want. You can do all that. That might change their actions, but it will not change them. Humanity must be born again. Your children must be born again. Jesus says, everybody that hears from God and learns from God God will come to him. The Bible says in the New Testament, everyone will know the Lord. So if your children have not learned and been taught directly by God and they don't know God personally, then they are not saved. In other words, you can't save your children. They must be saved, but you cannot do it. Your job is to discipline them and instruct them. Um, but only God can make them into a new creation. We can pray for them. We can live as an example for them. We can share the gospel with them. We can discipline their character. But ultimately, God has to save them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to focus for this uh, this first section, we'll focus on discipline. So in the Old Testament, in, in the Old Testament, God disciplined the people of Israel. How, how were, uh, in the Old Testament, how was somebody sanctified? In the New Testament, we know somebody sanctified by the Spirit of God working inside writing the law of God on their heart. But in the Old Testament, God used the law and he bring and he brought judgments and he did these things and sent prophets to discipline and to correct the people. And so he would bring judgments on them. So to discipline them. How wrong how show To humble them so they would be afraid so that they would obey. Now all this was from the outside. Uh it's not it's not some an internal in their heart. It's something to change their actions. Okay, so when we're talking about disciplining people, or disciplining our children, we're, we're talking about disciplining their, their actions, their character, their attitudes. Yeah, he did. I forget. Something. I forget too. Otherwise, I would tell. Actions, attitude. I really don't know. Ah, <laughs> pingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one, pingo. Okay, so, uh, so with with our with our children, we need to form them like clay. So, ah, now our children, ah, we need to like. 你叫什么? 你, 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 不是你造, yeah, we, we need to, 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 to form them and direct them 
Not because that will save them, but because that at least restrain the evil within them. You see, God kept disciplining Israel because otherwise he'd have to destroy Israel completely before Messiah came. You see, the, the Gentiles could go generation after generation after generation without much trouble from God. But the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. So since God chose Israel, he was very close to deal with them immediately. So he was continually disciplining the judgment, giving national judgment. So he could keep them alert and remembering because they naturally forget about God. So so if you ask my two younger kids, nine, uh, nine and eight, today, how many times did you think about God? Now, now the older one's starting to think a little bit more, but usually the answer is, nope, didn't think about God today. Okay, um and the Jing Jo Kai Shi Shang Gung Gung serious la but still, because they're godless. Because they're living for themselves. And, 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 and so we, we have to understand that's the nature of man without pride. So we need to be the ones that are very close with them, disciplining them and restraining their evil. My, my oldest is 13. And I was thinking, I, I, I was uh, thinking last week, I've been thinking about, by the time I was 13, I was getting drunk. And I, you know, I was already stealing money and doing all kinds of stuff. You know, and, and Esther, my wife, said to me, Said, oh yeah, you were on a kampong. <laughs> yeah, you were just running free. Yeah, because whenever I would get home from school, I'd lay my bag down and I'd straight back out, get on my bike, and I'd go. You know, and so I was like comparing the difference between my son and, and my life at that age. And, and, and part of that is just being restrained. Part of part part of the difference. Oh, is that my 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 what that means is to be a wicked sinner without any restraint. So, so discipline is, is it, it's it's just like dealing with clay. It's just forming something. If you if you make a little man out of clay, it won't live. But it'll have two arms and two legs. It'll look something like a man. Okay, so it, it will it, it will look something like man, but it won't be alive until the spirit of God breathes on the, your child. But we, we want him to be disciplined We want him to be disciplined so that when God does breathe on them, they already have two hands, they already have two legs, they're already walking in a direction that's suitable to God. 
Because until today, I'm still dealing with disciplining and changing my own habits and and and, and issues of my life. I mean, whether it be from sleeping habits, all the different day to day things of life. That I didn't receive the discipline in those areas when I was a child, so I'm still dealing with it. And those things are very important to day to day life. They, they help us structure our life. And they make us more useful to God if we've already got those things in place. So when we're disciplining our children, we're, we're preparing them so that God can cause them to be born again, and then God can use them how He wishes. And we're doing it because we know that it's also good for them, that those things will help them. So how do we, uh, so before we go on, we're going to start talking some more practical things, but before we get into the more practical, are there any comments or questions? Yeah, so so if you're here and your your husband is not a believer or he's not involved in the process. Then the things we're gonna talk about, just apply them to you like you're the father. And so that God can give you grace to do that. The, 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 one of the biggest differences in a man and a woman or a, a mother and a father. It's kind of hard to put in words, but the, the, the father is just more authoritative. And the mother, because she's involved with all the little details. And she has more little conversations with the kids that she's more familiar with. Them. So it can become difficult to switch from real familiar to authoritative. Uh, some mothers, they're tempted to be too merciful. Too understanding, too accepting. But that's not always good for the, the child. Other mothers, because they are so close with the children, Sometimes they're more like a sister to the kid than they are a mother to the kid. And we know brothers and sisters fight. And so some mothers can go from being overly close and overly familiar to being mad and upset and bitter. And so these are these are some some of the weaknesses that you'll have to deal with. You'll have to find you have to find a way by God's grace and through prayer and wisdom to be able to be able to switch from Mom to dad. The other thing. Because a lot of times the, the husband is just the authority behind the mom. If I if I'm upstairs and I hear Esther say, Oh me! Oh me, brush your teeth. 
And then I hear it a second time about three minutes later, Omi, brush your teeth. Then from upstairs you'll hear the sound, Omi. Because I'm just backing up her and saying, look, what she's saying, she's saying in my name, do it. Okay, so so without the, the husband involved, it's just a different dynamic. So is there another uh, Them, one of them, I pre- I'm disciplined them. One of them is harder than the girl. Mm-hmm. Is it? You mean you mean it's more difficult for you emotionally to do it, or you mean no, the other kid no, is worse? No, the, the kids, the boy one, the character is even worse. So I I discipline him uh, more than the girl, but the the boy will think that I, right. I hit him more than the girl. Right, right, right. Okay, uh, so it's just so, like, because the uh, boy's uh, we're going to talk about the practical now. If I don't cover it in this time, next time I ask for questions, bring that up again and then we'll, we'll touch on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask him. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just, just hit the girl even when she doesn't hit, so it's equal. <laughs> just hit them both. <laughs> One does not both get it. Okay, uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's not the real answer probably. But until we, if we don't answer it another way. So okay, okay. The first. First key, the, the, the one of the most important things in disciplining. Okay, 就是说管教的第一个秘诀. Well, I'm sorry. Is there any other questions? Okay, so one of the the main keys is consistency. 好的，一个非常重要的秘诀就是要呃要这要这个嗯。Consistency呀。Means you got to you got to make certain boundaries that the kids know exactly where the boundaries are. If you endlessly say you're gonna get a spanking, you're gonna get a spanking, but they know they're never gonna get a spanking. Or you keep changing the rules without clarifying them. And it just goes according to your mood of whether you want them to do that. Okay, so the the the, the point is, is that and also it's that if we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. So Okay, so we can't just uh Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so we, we need to be consistent in what we say. Now now look, this is not just with our children, this is in line. Okay, but but in particularly, okay, when you're gonna discipline your child. Make sure when you say you're going to do it, that you do it. Because otherwise your words are meaningless. God, if he says he's going to do it, he does it. He's going to judge the world. When he judged Israel, he said, I'm going to do this, and then he did it. Okay, now before we continue on that, let's, let's say what, the goal of our discipline. The main one is that our children would respect us. We want them to respect us, which will lead to obedience. 
We don't want them to like us. We want them to respect us. 我们不要他们喜欢我们，要他们尊重我们。We want them to understand that we have all the authority. 我们要他们明白，所有的权柄就在我们握在我们的手里。My children have no authority whatsoever. 我的孩子在家里面根本没有任何的权柄。They know that all the authority is mine. 他们知道所有的权柄都是呃握在我手里。Even whenever my wife is using the authority, it's still my authority. 就包括我的太太在运用这个权柄，是我的还是我的权柄 ？Now that's the first thing they understand is that I have all the authority. 那这个是第一点，他们必须要明白。And then, as they get older, they need to understand that that authority is not actually mine, but it belongs to God. 那当然，当随着他们的呃呃呃长大，他们呃呃随着时间的推推呃推移，他们可以知道哦，这个权柄其实不并不是我自己的，是属于神。So by bringing them by by bringing them under our respect and respect our authority, we're bringing them under. The authority of God. So, 带领他们在我们的权柄之下，叫他们尊重我们，顺服我们。实际上，我们是在教导他们怎么样尊重、顺服神。So it's not this idea of like, hey, you know, I'm the dad here. You guys all have to obey me. 所以并不是说啊，就是因为我是父亲啊，所以你们都要顺服我。Now I'll say exactly that. 但是我其实我开口讲就是这个这句话。To my children, especially when they were younger. 就呃，对我的孩子，尤其是当他们更小的时候。I'm the dad here. I have all the authority. 我是爸爸，我有所有的权柄，我说了算，你们都要听。But of course, my my goal, my purpose is. 但是当然，我的目标，我的目的是。Is I'm trying to bring them under God's authority. 我要把他们带到神。It's not just for my ego that I'm a man. 不只是为了我的自我中心的，我是这个家的主啊，我怎么样 ？It's out of love and benefit for them. 是出于爱心，好呃，为了呃，给他们。And it's out of love towards God that hey, these little wicked rebels need to submit to God. 也是对神的爱，因为我看见这些小小叛逆的魔鬼呢，也要顺服神。Okay, so that's our goal: is we're bringing them to respect us, so that as they grow, they understand that's the authority of God. 所以这个就是我们的目的，目标就是我们要孩子，当他们开始学会尊重我们，他们开始尊重神的权柄。Okay, now how do we discipline? 那我们怎么样管教 ？Now I'm not going to get into every single rule we need to set in our house. I'll, I'll touch on some of that. 当然我不会讲每一个细节，关于教会啊、呃、家家庭里面应该有什么规则。But whenever we do set things, there needs to be consequences. 嗯、um, ，但是我会讲一些。而而另外就是当我们嗯、um, 定了一个规矩，定了一个呃界限，一定要有后果的。And from 违背了有后果。And from from I would guess from about two years old to about Seven, six, six years old. Spanking is the way to go. Um, 而且我认为从大概两岁到六七岁呢。Uh, 就是说，体罚是最好的办法。In other words, they need to be spanked. 换句话，一定要打他们的屁股。The Bible says, if you spare the rod, if you don't use the rod on your child, then you spoil the child. 圣经说，你如果不敢体罚孩子的话，你把孩子给愁坏了。It says, a father who hates his son does not hit him with the rod. 注意，圣经说，恨孩子的父亲不用。呃，这个棍子来打。Okay, so you must spank your child if you love them. 如果你爱你的孩子，你必须要用体罚。Now there's some important things to understand about that. 那当然，这个也是有一些啊、uh, 很重要的啊、uh, 一些方面。You do not spank your child on his face, in his arm, on his back. 你不要打他的脸，他的胳，他的手臂，他的背部。God gave them a butt that got cushion. 给他们一个屁股，自然有垫。你可以在那里打。Okay, and the the best is with a a lightweight wooden spoon. 而最好的用一个很轻的一个木做的一个糖吃。If it doesn't hurt, it's no use. 如果不痛，没有用。Okay, now below two years old, a good pinch on the butt usually is enough. 那两岁以下，你来，你。There was a there was a kid visiting and stayed in our house for like、uh, two weeks. 最近有有一个孩子来住我们家里，大概两个星期的时候，那个 Papua 来的。And、uh, and he's wild. 然后他真的是野蛮的孩子
So, so I, I got permission from the dad that I could pinch his butt. So I pinched his butt. I told him no, and then he did it. I pinched his butt. The next time he was doing something, way back, I couldn't reach him. Uh, it was in the back of the car. I said, Do you need a pinch? And uh, he immediately changed his behavior. Next time, same thing. Next time, same thing, a little bit, a little bit longer. Then he started forgetting the next time I said it a couple times. Nope, so he got pinched again. So he wasn't listening very well to his father, but he'd listen to me if I said no. Because there was consequence with it. He, he felt it. He, he, he knew it. Okay, and so that's to get that, their attention so that they know, oh, I don't want this. I don't want this. The goal, uh, 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 one of the things we're doing is we're humbling the child. Okay, but we're not humiliating the child. There's are two, two different things. If you slap your child on the face, you are so bold to slap the, 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 the image of God. And you're humiliating your child. In the, in the verse here we read, it says, it, says, uh, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Because you can make them bitter. Because you don't treat them with, with, with the right respect. So we need to be careful that we're doing it, discipline on the, on the bottom, not in the face, not just reaching out and smacking them. Now, why does it take discipline for us to spank the child on the bottom? Now, why does it take discipline for us to spank the child on the bottom? Now, why does it take discipline for us to spank the child on the bottom? Now, why does it take discipline for us to spank the child on the bottom? Yeah, because sometimes it's just easier, they're right there, just reach out and smack them. Yeah. It's going to take a lot more work to get them over, pull their pants down, bend them over, get the spoon, spank them in the butt. But that's also very good for us. Because I tell you, if you hit your child in the face, you're sinning against God. Okay, but the thing is, whenever it takes time, we're going to have to organize to spank their bottom. When, okay, uh, if it's too easy to reach out and smack them, if it's too easy to reach out and smack them. We'll do it out of emotion instead of out of discipline. So we're we're not we're not spanking them to make ourselves okay. Oh you made me so mad, that's why I hit you. Well, then you just confessed sin. We can't hit our children because we're angry. Now, you might be angry when you hit your children. But you can't do it because of your anger. 
You're doing it because this is what is good for them and this is what is God command. So you'll have to control yourself and control your anger that when you're spanking them, you're doing it according to what they've done, not according to how you feel. So you control yourself and then what? Not according to how you feel, but according to what they need. Okay. Um, now I, I made the point a moment ago that we need to be consistent. Because if you say I'm gonna spank you, I'm gonna spank you, don't get spanking, then they know that. Also, you might get yourself so frustrated that you end up hitting them more than you want to hit them. For example, you might start off, ah, don't do that, you're going to get spanking. But since you don't spank them, they're going to keep doing it. Ah, you're going to get spanked. And so then you start yelling louder and louder and louder. Now when you yell, it is very hard to keep your emotions calm. So if you think, well, I'll yell and then they'll get the point, but also your emotions will start to get riled And so then you're going to end up exploding. And you're gonna you're gonna either you're gonna hit the kid too much or you're just gonna go insane for a few minutes or something. Okay, so but you but if you're consistent and they know that every single time you say, if you do that again, you'll get a spanking. Then you can, it's like magic. If you do that again, you'll get spanked. And they'll know it's coming until they'll stop. And you don't have to yell. So consistency is very important. Okay, uh, but one of the biggest mistakes I made with my first son was being too consistent. Because I said God always punishes when he threatens to do it, but he doesn't always punish God told Nineveh he was going to destroy Nineveh, but he didn't destroy Nineveh. Okay, because when they, when they responded in a certain way, he was able to, to change the, the, the result. Now, sometimes the child will truly change their attitude, but they still need to get the consequence. Not, not because of that time, but for next time that they know that even if I change at the last minute, there's still going to be a consequence. But there has to be times whenever you say, okay, I told you you're going to get a spanking. Okay, you're not going to get a spanking. Okay, let's go to Psalm 103. Okay, let's go to Psalm 103. Verse 9 and 10 says, He will not always accuse, neither will he keep his anger forever. He does not tra treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Verse 10 and for 11, For as the highest the heavens are above the earth, so great is mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far he has removed their transgression from us. Like a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord gives compassion to those who fear him. For we, he knows that we are formed, he remembers that we are but dust. So we'll go from 10 to 14. 
他没有去按我们的罪过待我们，也没有叫我们的罪孽报应我们。天与地何等的高，他的慈爱向敬畏他的人也是何等的大。东离西有多远，他叫我们的过犯离我们也多远，也有多远。父亲怎样连续他的儿女，耶和华也怎样连续敬畏他的人，因为他知道我们的本本体，呃，思念我们不过是尘土。Okay, so here it says that he God does not treat us the way that we deserve. 所以在这里说的很很清楚，就是神给我们的这个待遇，并不是按照我们所该的。So so sometimes our children they. Don't need to get what they deserve. So, 有时候也可以这样子来，用以这个心肠来可怜孩子。Okay, now this is one reason we need to be careful that we don't threaten too much. 所以这个也是一个很好的一个理由，我们来考虑。所以我们不要呃威胁过头。Because once you say I'm going to spank you, then ninety percent of the time you need to do it. 因为你一说一出你的口说我要打你。百分之九十的时候，你一定要做到。So if they're doing something that's wrong, and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is you're going to get a spanking. 所以如果他们犯了一个错误，然后你一开口就讲我要打你。Either you're going to end up not being consistent and not spanking them. 或者是等一下你就没有坚持你的管教，而你没有管教他们。Or you're going to feel compelled to be consistent. You're going to be spanking them an awful lot. 或者是你会感到被迫是要一定要管教，然后结果是你。So we need we need to make sure that we understand that it's not the first thing that we do is just spank every time. So we need to understand that it's not the first thing that we do is just spank every time. 第一个就是第一个反应，就是一有什么呃问题，你马上。I mean, the first thing is don't do that. 第一件事就是要跟他孩子说，你不要做这么做。The second thing is very seriously. Do not do that. The third time, is very seriously saying, "You should not do that." The third time, 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 the We see something, and we we need to adapt to it. 当然，我们不是说这个要百分之百的时候都这么做。有时候我们需要根据那个这个情况要呃调整。But eighty to ninety percent of the time, if you say it, you need to do it. 九十，如果你说了说到你要做到。Otherwise, they will not know where the boundaries are, and spanking will be of no use to them. 要不然他们并不会知道界限在哪里，而且管教呃用体罚对他们来说是没有用的。Okay, so we don't do it because we're angry. 并不是，所以我们做这个并不是出于呃这个愤怒。We need to control ourselves. 我们必须要控制自己的情绪。We don't just smack them anywhere in any way. We have a certain way that we discipline them. 打孩子像打他的脸或者是什么，有一个一个办法。We we need to be consistent. 我们需要坚持，就是持续。But understand, sometimes there's times to to show mercy and and to let the consequence go. 就是我们要坚持这个管教，但是我们也许有时候也。需要呃，知道有怜悯，而我们不需要太过过分的坚持。We need to keep ourselves from yelling because that leads to more emotion. More emotion makes it more difficult to discipline rightly. 呃、uh, ，我们需要就是控制自己，不要呃、uh, 随便轻易的来喊来叫，因为你一开始这样子的，这个更难控制自己的行为。If if you discipline your child when you are It's very clear that you're very angry and almost out of control. 如果你非常生气，气头上就是呃来管教孩子，而很明显你差不多失控了。Then they will understand what they're trying to avoid is you getting angry. 孩子会这样理解，就是哦，他们要避免的就是看见你变成这个样子，就是你生气。They won't be learning that they need to respect you. They'll learn that oh, got to be scared of them. 他们并不会学到哦，我要尊重这个这个人，而是哦，我怕他的他发怒。So we need to control ourselves. So 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 we need to
because they know that it's wrong for you to be angry and it's only hitting them because they're angry. They know that. 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 They know You should often apologize to your children. You should apologize to your children probably more than they apologize to you. Because your conscience, if you're if you're born again, your conscience should be more aware of the little things that you've done. Now this is very hard to do. Because if If your child did something wrong, because if your child did something wrong, and you respond wrong to that, 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 and you respond If you say I'm sorry for the way I responded, then their deceptive little wicked heart, and 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 their Like a hypocrite. We feel 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 like They know we were wrong and we responded wrong. They know we were wrong and we responded wrong. So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like you're doing wrong." So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like you're doing wrong." So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like you're doing wrong." So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like you're doing wrong." So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like you're doing wrong." So in their mind, they just think, "Yeah, you you disciplined me, but look, you're like It doesn't mean that what the child you did. It just means that my response was wrong. So we need to communicate. So we need to communicate. Okay, we we need to communicate about this. They need to understand that. What does it look like to live with a Christian? Oh, so we need to look at these things. They need to communicate. They need to know what living with a Christian is like. It usually doesn't look like perfection. It usually doesn't look like perfection. That your kids see all your sins. Your 孩子会看见你的所有的错误。And they need to understand that you also see your sins. 但是他们也要知道你自己看到自己的罪。But you need to be able to communicate that in a way that doesn't make them think that that means they're not doing anything wrong. But you need to communicate to them. Yeah, 但是你要你要想办法跟孩子沟通。So that they can still see their mistake. Uh, so, 孩就是说，你要让孩子知道你知道你错，但是孩子还是错。Yeah. So they. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, let me see if there's anything else. By the way, at some point we can take a break. Yeah, that's where we're we're there. Okay. So, uh. Any questions about the 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 more practical part before we go on? Now remember, at the end of the day, we'll have time to ask any questions. But right now, it's practical. 关于刚才我们讲的这些的，有没有一些啊其他的疑问？等一下，如果有别的方面的问题，等到最后。There was the question I didn't know how to answer. 刚才有，我不知道怎么回答。So it was. Uh, so so the. 男的不，男的跟女的不一样，我就是稍微说一下，男的跟女的不一样，男的比较硬，脾脾气很糟，比较糟糕，女的比较乖啊，所以惩罚孩子比较硬的时候，这个男的总是说不公平。So that that comes with the point of communicating。所以这个就是一个沟通的问题。And and helping them think is the older one the boy or the older one the girl？ 哪一个年纪更大？女的是更大。Older one's the girl. So so yeah um yeah all three of my kids. Definitely, my oldest thought he was like the hated one. So, my three children, which is my oldest, he always thought he was the hated one. So, so I mean, they all get the 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 the
And he was he was at the, he was definitely the worst. Concentration should be be difficult. So I mean, so there was a season I remember as I don't know how long it was, probably a year. You don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. Like endless. I remember there was a season I remember as probably a year. You don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. Like endless. I remember there was a season I remember as probably a year. You don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. I mean, if they want to be bitter, they'll stay bitter. Uh, but but we need to communicate to them and say, look, here's here's the thing. It was like this with her, and it was like this with you, and this is why the consequence for you. I mean, we need to. You know, and not only talk to them in the moments when they're in trouble. Because they will be about as reasonable when they're angry as you are when you're angry. Yeah, they won't be reasonable. They're not going to humble themselves and say, oh yeah, mama, I no, no, they're going to continue to find something to, to But at another time, when they're in a good mood, they're going to listen and they're going to understand. So they might not admit that they know it when they're mad again, but they're hearing it. So eventually, eventually they know they're lying when they say you don't love me or whatever. Eventually they know that they're lying. They might keep saying it, but they already know it's. So, so we have to be careful, and, and we have to be careful that we don't let that manipulate us. Them saying things like that, so that we don't discipline them. 而且特别的要注意，就是千万不要让孩子这样来控告、来操控呃家长啊，就等等一下就不管教。Because that is their main goal. 因为那个是他们主要的目标。They are God in the home, and they want to control you and everybody else. 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 They want to